Hi. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a profile for a camera. Now to me it makes sense to create a profile for a camera because in order to have a consistent workflow based on ICC profiles we need to have profiles for all the devices we use including our camera. Just like we create a profile for our display and our printer we can create a profile for our camera because just like a display the camera will not be behaving the same for your camera and every other camera out there. They will all be slightly different and some will be really different but most are not as different as printers but they are at least not exactly the same. So we can create a profile to correct that difference in behavior of cameras. What we need is a camera that allows us to shoot in RAW because if we don't shoot RAW but shoot in JPEG then we are already embedding a profile into that image. So it's already profiled and you can't create a profile from something that's already profiled because you'd be doing profile over profile. So you need your camera to be set at RAW format. And once you do that you can shoot anything as long as it has in the picture a target. And we're going to use the Color Checker Classic target. I'll show it to the camera there. This is the target and it is basically a gray balance and the colors needed to create a profile. What you do is you place this target in the shoot. So I just place it here in front of the first bottle. I've got a bottle collection here that I'm going to take a picture of. And I simply focus on the color chart for now and take a shot. And now uh, the file needs to be read from the card, so I take the card out and I place that into the card reader and we're going to use the Color Checker Passport software to actually create the profile. The Color Checker Passport software is from XWrite and it's free so you can download it for, for Mac and for Windows but you do need the target to be able to create a profile. If you don't have a target with the uh, specific colors on it, you cannot create a profile. It also requires us to use DNG as a file format. And as our camera does not create DNG, we need to convert our raw file to a DNG. So the easiest way to do that is using Photoshop. We just go to Photoshop and say File Open. And we go to our card and choose it and choose the last picture we did and say open. Now this is going to open the file and show it in a raw file a format but it also allows us to do something we need and that is to save it as a DNG. So that's just a basic feature of Photoshop opening any raw format and then being able to save it as a DNG file. And because Photoshop can read any camera, uh, it's easy to use Photoshop to convert to a DNG. So you, to save it as a DNG, we go to left lower left corner. I've already chosen the desktop to save it, and I will save it like that. And I just cancel the Photoshop interface. So now we have a DNG on our desktop, which we can simply drag onto the window of Color Checker Passport. The software now will analyze the image and look for the color checker within the frame. It doesn't need to be straight, it can be angled, it can be upside down, it doesn't matter, as long as nobody is covering the patches, because if the patches are covered you can't read them obviously. So it found it within the photo and we're gonna you can even adjust it if it didn't find it exactly right or you you can manually adjust it so um, it's at the right place. And from that you can click on create profile and then it will create a profile um, which I will overwrite from a previous one I've done with the name of your camera. So you can also use a specific way so say this is a studio um, version of a camera profile because you can have several camera profiles into your system. Uh, it's just like a, any other profile you can have as many as you like for as many different workflows that you use. So if you have specific studio lighting or daylight, you can have different 
camera profiles for that purpose. So I save it, it's created and saved into the right location. Now when I open my file in Photoshop I need to tell Photoshop to use that camera profile. So it's done here and I go to my Photoshop and let me minimize that one. And go back to Photoshop. I will say file open just like I did before and I will choose the last file again. Say open and normally it would have this interface and if you look at the camera icon here it's for camera calibration it would use Adobe Standard by default so if you don't choose a profile it will use a assumed Adobe Standard profile which obviously is not the behavior of your camera but just a generic basic standard so instead of the standard we can use the Nikon V300S Studio which we just created and we can say open the image so now the profile that we measured has been taken into the picture doesn't mean our colors are perfect but the color balance um, is like the camera actually should record it because the colors are compensated for any flaws that are on, and on there caused by the camera itself so the white balance of course is not ideal yet and I, have, I don't have enough exposure but that's not to do with the profile of the camera it's, that's just me having to increase uh, the settings and do it like any other raw format you'd have to modify uh, but there is a difference between the colors you get when you do the standard and the camera profile one so to show that I'm going to open the image again and this time I'm not going to choose the camera profile but I'm going to use the Adobe standard and I'm going to open it and now if I click between the two we can actually see the difference between the two and it might not be very clear but if I look at the lower left corner of my screen and I'll zoom in there you can see that the three uh, patches that are on my target the blue ones right here those three actually do match better in the profile one than in this one because in the standard one which I opened last the blue color this one and that one is almost identical and on my target it is not identical and then within the profile one it is better too and the same thing goes for the cap of this bottle if I look at the real-life image I look at the cap on the screen and here they're not the same and if I go to this one they are very good match so the process does work and it's not complicated to use the only limitation is is that it is depending on the light source now there is an option to use the color checker passport in a dual illuminant DNG so you can have uh, a profile that covers more variance in lighting and uh, conditions but the more variance in lighting conditions the more difference you will have in colors so you need to adjust more anyway so to me it doesn't really make sense we uh, may do a one on the dual uh, Illumina DNG later on in a video to see how well that works but this is just one basically for a standard uh, known lighting condition fixed lighting condition which in which it's most useful because <laughs> if you're going outdoors your lighting conditions will change a lot and it's not easy to get a consistent behavior from your camera if your lighting conditions change all the time because your camera will react different to a different light but basically it does work um, it does improve my colors it does something that is hard for me to do um, without this because how can I change just the behavior between those two blues uh, without affecting the rest of the colors that's not so easy whereas if you use a profile you just know you're going to just affect the colors that are off uh, which you want to do because you want to get a match to the actual uh, photo that you took so easy system to use um, cheap the color checker classic is uh, very affordable and I think everybody who does studio photography should at least consider trying a camera profile if you don't like the result of your camera profile you can still stick to standard because you can have as many profiles within Photoshop for your camera as you like 
but if it does help you to get the colors better uh, and get, for instance, more consistency between two different cameras, then why not use it? So if you have any remarks or any comments, feel free to contact me. And that's it for now. I hope you found it useful and uh, thanks for watching.